Wait, maybe it's going. Recording. Okay. okay. All right. Well, we hello, to... everyone, and welcome back to Black Who. Well, we're now on Zoom. Yay! Wow, look at God. So good to have you ladies with us. As you know, we are Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Our weekly phone Bible study ministry. We got another great lesson this week. As you know, we've been studying uh, the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And Sister Gina, share with us, uh, who are we going to be studying today? And then after that, Sister Sandy, we're going to have you to open us up in prayer. Do you know who we're going to be talking about? We're going to be studying Nahor. Woo, Nahor, boy, it's going to be good. So Sister uh, Sandy, thank you for being with us as well this morning, too. Would you be so kind to open us up in prayer? Welcome in, God, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Ghost, our Comforter. But we do know all three are going to be teaching us in this next in-depth Bible study. Sister Sandy, would you please open us up sure. in prayer? Father God, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, we welcome you in today to our Bible study meeting of Nahor. And we just look forward to you opening our heart and our minds for these great verses that we're going to receive today to understand the genealogy of Jesus, your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you today for this great time together with these great ladies. In the name of Jesus, we pray today. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister Sandy. Thank you so much for that awesome prayer. As you stated there, you know, we'll welcome uh, him in, our uh, father in, because he got something to share with us. So again, we're talking about Jesus' genealogy. And many of us, you know, when we think of Jesus' genealogy, first one we normally think of is pretty much Mary and Joseph, don't we? But when we look in the, in the annals or the records of the New Testament, we're going to go here to Matthew. Let's start here. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Minister Love is going to start us here. And then we're going to uh, introduce some other scriptures. But I just would love to show this scripture because this gives us a clue uh, where Jesus, how far he goes back into the ancestry records. Let's take a look. Matthew chapter 1. Okay. And we're going to read verse 1. All right, audience, we encourage you to join with us. With us. Matthew 1.1, 1, 1. it says, the book. I love that word, the book. Because if you want to find out your history, you need to look at a what? Book. It says, the book of the generation of who? Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And again, we know this is not biological. This ancestry, this genealogy is totally different than a uh, biological one. We're going to actually get into the spiritual. So with that being said, I believe I said, uh, Sandy, you going to read the scripture for us? Sure. Okay, let's go to Luke. So let's start and see where this Nahar comes from. So Luke chapter 3, and we're going to take a look at verse 34. And Sister Sandy is going to read that for us, and audience, we actually join too. Now, Sandy, after you read the text, we want you to share with us what was it that you was able to find out about this Nahor or what you may already know. And then, Gina, we want you to follow as well, okay? Okay, sounds great. All right, here we go. Verse 34. Which was the son of Jacob? Which was the son of Isaac? Which was the son of Abraham? Which was the son of Thahara? And which was the son of Nahor? Hmm. All right. And then okay. um, what I found out today is that the uh, name of Nahor, it means snorting to breathe uh, heavily. And also I found that it says... Um, charred or scorched. And then it said that um, Nahor is stating that he's older than Abraham. So that was interesting. Uh, wait a minute, what was that last It was saying said? that Nahor is older than Abraham. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what oh. I saw in the Google. Oh, oh, okay, very interesting. And Gina, what did you find out? Uh, same thing as mom, except there's two Nahors. There's Nahor, Abraham's brother, and there's Nahor, Abraham's grandfather. So we got two there. So that makes sense in the genealogy because it's before. But we always going to get, you know, our first thought is Nahor. Oh, that's Abraham's brother. Because didn't Isaac marry uh, the, 
the daughter of Nahor and uh, the other woman, I don't know if it's Milka or Rachel, right? So that's where, that's where you can kind of like get a little confused. Yeah, it is confusing, this one. Oh, oh, well, now look at that. Listen to what you both just said. Each one of you got a little bit of history of this individual, and we came to find out there's more than one. But both of them are connected to Jesus some kind of way, aren't they? Mm -hmm. and, and did you hear, Gina, uh, the one that you said, wait a minute, there's two. One is not only Abraham's brother, but his wife's grandfather. So that name must have had some significance for Abraham's father to name one of his boys after his daddy. You know, we normally name our kids, you know, well, we do after uh, grandfathers, but normally, you know, it's the daddy, but this one was the grandfather. And so it is amazing. It is amazing uh, with these uh, names, how they are connected. So let's just take a look, look at the meaning. And I like the meaning that you guys found out. So I'm going to put a picture uh, you said, um, I believe uh, you talked about uh, snorting. You know, now that's a word when I saw that, I'm like, snorting? At first I thought about snorkeling, but now nah, <laughs> that's something different. So snorting, think of it like a, a horse. You know when a horse is getting ready to come out the gate and his nose flare, the nostrils flare up and he's, he's breathing hard because he's running hard. That's snorting. Well, can you imagine that? being pictured with Jesus, with Nahor, this morning? What, what was he angry about? What could have made this person, Nahor, flare up? Well, what I found fascinating, but well, I'm not going to spill the beans. We're going to get into the text. So let's make the connection. Let's do this first. Let's go and see, can we actually find this Nahor in the text? And this, this one, again, this is this is Abraham's grandfather in, in Luke. This is his grandfather. Now, that's, that's amazing right there. His grandfather is in the genealogy. Let's take a look. Genesis chapter 11. Let's go over there. Uh, Gina, read for us Genesis chapter 11. And I want you to read, hold on, verse uh, 22 through 25. All right. And Sarah lived 30 years and begot Nahor. And Sarah lived after he begot Nahor 200 years and begot sons and daughters. And Nahor lived nine and 20 years and begot Terah. And Nahor lived after he begot Terah 119 years and begot sons and daughters. All right. So right here, what, what caught your attention in, 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 that, in those scriptures? What name kept coming up? Well, we see Nahor. Uh, uh -huh. we, see, we see how long he lived, what, what, uh, at what time he, he had sons and daughters, and, and that he was the father of Terah. So we're going back with the genealogy of Luke. We're seeing the line right here. So we're seeing that Nahor, who Nahor is. Yeah. Um, and there, and there, his daddy is mentioned in the, uh, uh, one of his sons is mentioned, Terah. Mm -hmm. So in the New Testament, we saw that name in the Greek spelling as Terah, T-H-A-R-A. -A. But when we get over here in the Old Testament, we actually see the Hebrew uh, form, and it's Terah, T-E-R-A-H, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. So right there, this is the Nahor in Jesus' genealogy. That is the one. But Sandy, I want you to read a little bit further. Sandy, read now for us verse 26 and 27. And then, uh, oh, matter of fact, Sandy, uh, all the way down to 29, and tell us why you think we went to these scriptures. Okay. And Terah lived 70 years and begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah, Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begot Lot. Hmm. And Haran died before the father, before his father, Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldeas. So 28, right? Or 29. And, yes. and Abram and Nahor took, took them wives. 
The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, Sarai, and the, Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, wife was Melchah, and the daughter, of, which was the daughter of Haram. So, this is. Okay, showing, wait a second. Go ahead. There should be more to that text. Uh, uh, did Did you finish that? I didn't hear something else. Oh, I'm sorry. The father of Melchai and the father of Iskai. Oh, all right. Okay, Sandy. Now, why do you why do you think we went to those scriptures? What stood out to you there? Well, um, I think this is going to uh, when Abram, Nahor, and Haran. She had three sons. Okay, and then in these generations. Um, and is showing, and then lots in there too. What, what, Sandy? No, go ahead. I said then she also had a son named Lot. Okay, so this is what's going on here. Yeah, there's a lot so of people. This is what's happening. Did you notice right after Nahar, the grandfather now, he right. had Tara. Right. And now Tara had three boys. That name Nahar. Abram, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nahar, uh, uh, there it is. Nahar mm -hmm. and Haran. Yeah, Did you notice that Abraham have a brother now, just like his grandfather named Nahar? Right. right. So right there, we were able to see two generations, those names, two people with the same name, right there in the same in those scriptures. Right. Not far from one another. Right. Talk about being honored. So this what I love about these scriptures too, is, is that we're seeing how the genealogy, notice how Tara had three boys, just like Noah did, huh? Mm -hmm. Noah had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now look at Abraham's daddy, Tara. He has who? Abram, Nahar, and Haran. Right. And wow, it's something about coming in threes, isn't it? Right. But this is what really, if we understand the time that we're living in, y'all got to get this now. If you notice right here, we're living, Abraham now is around about mm, 2000 to 1800 BC, okay? And so remember, they're coming after the flood time. This is all after the flood. And so what they're, what the environment that they're under, they're living amongst these pagan gods. You got a lot of gods all around them. And so Abraham, them, get this, Abraham, them family was idol makers. Did y'all know them? Mm -hmm. Terra and going all the way back, they were idol makers. So that's why God had called Abram to come out of that. Remember where they lived? They was in Babylon. Did y'all read the text? Remember the scripture said four. For mm -hmm. four of the Chaldees. So they was amongst the Babylonians on the, all those gods. So you can imagine being raised amongst all of this idol, and they was they was like flaring, ready to get out, roaring. You know what I mean, just just mad, you know. And so God, when God called Abram, now Nahor, Terah, and Haran, they all could have stayed. They could have said, "Go on, Abram, we ain't going with you. We're gonna stay here and worship our gods." But guess what? They packed and went right along with it. Wow, they was ready to get out too. Flaring. That's the flaring of the nostrils because they were being surrounded by the Babylonian pagan God. Woo. See how it is when you understand the meaning of these names? Mm -hmm. And now you can understand the conditions that they lived in. No wonder his name meant flaring of the nostrils or snorting. They had to get out of there. Wow. Seem like what we need to be doing today, huh? We should be, our nostrils are flaring right now. If you look mm -hmm. at the conditions that we're living in, people are what? Angry. Mm -hmm. And they're flaring up. Mm -hmm. And they ain't flaring up through the, uh, uh, just nostrils uh, in the physical, but they're taking this thing to their hands and their feet. They are protesting and it's turning how violently. Mm -hmm. Wow, huh? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? Hmm. Anyone have any thoughts? Well, history repeats itself. It's just like, uh, you know, they're living in a time that they hate it. They want yeah. it out. And like we're, we're going into a time that we don't even know what's coming. 
And I know when it gets to the ugliness, we're going to really want out too. Exactly. <laughs> There's nowhere to go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 It is not, it, you know, it's, we just have to stay with God and the people that are out there worshiping everything else. Um, we just got to stay out of their way and uh, hope God takes care of us. And see, that's what Abraham had to do. They had to go with God. He, when God Sweet. called him, he couldn't tell God, I, I'm going to stay. He had to go with God. Got and you. we are no different today. Right. We got to go with God. And see, a lot of us, we go with God, but the thing is, we don't stay with God. Right. You can start out with him, but are you going to end up with him? Right. That's the key. That's going to be Let's the take test. Let's look at the next test. That'll be uh, the test. Mm -hmm. Cindy, Genesis 24, 50. I think this is you, Gina, right? Gina, your yeah. turn. It's Gina's turn. Oh, sure. Tw Genesis 24. Uh, Genesis 24. Oh, you already know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just said it. <laughs> Genesis 24. Uh, Genesis, uh, and read for us verse 15 and tell us why you think we went there. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to... Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, and her, her pitcher upon her shoulder. So why did we go there? So, so basically we're looking at more genealogy because we're seeing uh, that Rebecca, who's going to be the wife of the son of Abram, uh, was also, I guess they're cousins? Is that, am I going it the right way? They're cousins? Um, and yes, uh, they are. Yeah. yeah, and then and then also but it seems remember, like the Rebecca's father is Abraham's brother. Mm -hmm. So I guess sort of coming sometimes like uh, what it sounds like the theme is is they're standing together. The family the family is together, and they're 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 becoming unique in that they're not wanting to mix with the outer people and it you know because even if you look at it Nahor married his niece so they're kind of it's like they're they're trying to unite and unify and stand against maybe you know what all that's mixing with the Chaldeans because God said you know don't mix with these people because they will defile you so they're trying you know I guess they're they're flaring their nostrils in a way like okay we need to stick together we need to exactly you know, be be you know unified in order to keep them over there and keep us over here. Uh -huh. So the main thing is for the unification is what, Sandy? That's a good point, Gina, uh, to keep the family unified. But why? What was the reason based on what we're learning today? Why do you think they had to keep the family together and make sure that uh, uh, the, well, I almost gave it away. Why, why, Sandy? Why do you think they had to stay united? They, they had to, that's for survival for them, you know, they had to stay together um, because that's support, you know, you, you can't go alone. You gotta have support people to help you when you have so much ugliness around you. So that, so they're all finding the people that are like-minded that know, know God and then they're, they're connecting with them. And it's all in the genealogy because we have the key players, Rebecca, and, um, Let me stop and, you right and, there. That's the answer. That's what I was looking for. Okay. The word genealogy. The main reason that they had to stay united, they had to make sure that seed came through kept the tribe. Going, kept going. They yeah. had to make sure Jesus, the Messiah, would come through somebody. No matter what they did, Tamar was a, a harlot, whatever role they had to do, they had to make sure that that family did not mix with the Canaanites. Although they came from Babylon, they came from that Egyptian stuff. So they knew uh, uh, the Babylonians and the Egyptian gods. They knew all of the pagan stuff. But there was a certain one that knew that God was going to bring the Messiah. And they had to make sure that family stayed together. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of the unity. That's why you will not see the thread of Jesus' genealogy broken from the Old Testament to the New. None of it is broken. Everybody in that line had a role to play. If Ruth had not gone with Naomi, we never would have had Obed. No Obed, no Jesse, no Jesse, no David. Are y'all seeing them? Mm -hmm. Right. So they didn't. So, so God so made sure that the right people met the we right look people. At cousins, we look at relatives. Oh, no, I can't believe she married a cousin. Well, back then it has them. 
But if I looked at my cousins today, I don't want to marry none of them. That's okay. I'm so <laughs> for sure. And nowadays they're saying that you don't do those things anymore. Uh, but back in the and day, I'm glad the law was changed. Yeah, yeah, things <laughs> changed. Now they say, no, you got some crazy people, with baby children. <laughs> Right, I'm like, no, Maybe I'm back then you did too, but it didn't matter. matter. <laughs> right, right. Ooh, so Close right there, yeah, so right there, did y'all see how Nahar came right on over a few chapters later, still right there, and now we saw, we see Rebecca is related. The woman that's going to give birth to Isaac. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, to Jacob and Esau. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Wow. And their cousins. See, this is why when y'all remember when Abraham and Sarah went to Egypt and the Pharaoh wanted Sarah and mm -hmm. Abraham said, oh, no, she's my uh, 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 sister. Right. But she, she was his wife. wife. Right. But guess what? She really was his sister because <laughs> Sarah and Abraham had the same father. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. And but they had different mothers. So he didn't lie. <laughs> so he did lie. He really was his sister and oh my his God. mother. Wow. Sister Interesting, huh? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So uh, let's see. We're going to go to Joshua. I think, Sandy, your turn. Okay. Joshua chapter 24. And Cindy, I want you to read for us verse 2 and then share with us why do you think we went to Joshua 24, verse 2. Mm -hmm. All right, verse 2. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nicor, and they served other gods. Okay, so this is reflecting to back to what we just, what we just went through. Um, Terah, the father of Abraham, and and the father of Nacor, and they all served other gods. So they're saying that, um, and this was uh, the flood, right? It dwelt on the other side of the flood, before the flood, right? After. After the flood, okay. And then it says Joshua too. Joshua said unto all the people, that say the Lord of God Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time. So this is just bringing up the people that we just looked at in the other scriptures, Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor. And they all ser served other gods back then. So, um, it's just a reflection on what we just studied and where they are in this part of the Bible that um, the Lord God is saying that, you know, what took place and hopefully it won't continue to take place serving gods, other gods. All right. We'll All forget. right. Gina, what about you? What did you get out of that? Uh, I mean, basically that he's talking about and. Okay, he's talking about the people, so we identified the people, but what he's saying is they served other gods. So like what you said, you know, we didn't, I, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't really realize that they were idol makers and that, uh -huh. and that, and that, that, you know, Joshua, when I think of Joshua, you know, he's getting ready to go to promised land, you know, he's, yeah. he's bringing, he's bringing them out. So he's like reflecting on, you know, you come from people that were idol makers, but you know, right. we're stepping into well, you know, maybe we're flaring our nostrils. Yeah. We're, we're moving forward. We're, we're moving. And, you know, even though you come from people that were serving other gods, we serve the one true God now. So that's, right. that's, that's kind of what I'm seeing just because the name of Joshua. I mean, he went out and, you know, yeah. he subdued, you know, all kinds of people. And, you know, I mean, if anybody got some flared nostrils, it was Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, he was a fighter, you know, it was like 31 people um, that he pushed through in order to get them to where they, where they were, where they were going, where God had promised them. So uh, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty much what I see. You know, that, that was the old, that's the other side. You know, he's even like saying on the other side of the flood, you know, like we're here now. Uh, you can even symbolize it. You know, they're getting ready to go through uh, what the Jordan River. So they got to go through another water to get through. So old is old, new is new. Wow. 
I mean, I knew a lot about Abraham, but I did not know the depth of how they worship other idol gods. Now we see where the root comes from. See, a lot of times we think people in the Bible are good, good, two shoes. But when you start digging in a family record, Abraham then wasn't all that good. They were they served other gods. Mm. And, and what I loved about this text is that this tells me Joshua knew his ancestry. Joshua came through Moses. Now, if anybody knew about Abraham and Isaac and those stories, who wrote the Torah? Moses did. Mm -hmm. So Joshua had the opportunity. Yeah, he may not live with Abraham now, but he sure read the story. He knew his history. He knew where, uh, uh, although they were getting ready to go into the promised land where there were idols and other gods, but he knew that's where they came from. So he don't want them to make that mistake. Uh, like you pointed out, Gina, they now got the true God. See, Abraham them didn't know the true God. Somehow, some way, it felt it felt the way from Noah up until Abraham them time. Because Noah knew the true God. He walked with God. But somehow, from Noah time to up to Abraham, somebody dropped the ball. So they started serving other gods. Are y'all seeing this? Mm hmm so if we don't look at our history, we will what? Repeat it. Uh -huh. If you don't know who's in your family history and who did what and why they did what they did. Mm -hmm. So this, this Nahor in the text, did y'all catch it? Did you catch how they spelled it on this scripture? They spelled it the same way they did in the New Testament. They put the C there. In Genesis 11, they didn't have the C, did it? Wow, huh? Right. See the little things that we can just pick up, huh? When we pay attention to the text. So there it is. They did serve other gods. Wow. Sure make you think a whole lot different that now we look at our lives and we're like, wow, I thought I was bad. Abraham there was too. Right. Majority were. Majority were. Sure was. And, that, and, and serving other gods is still operating today. That seed is still operating today. Wow. wow. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy. Gina, I think it's your turn. Deuteronomy. Sure. Chapter 1. And I want you to look at verse 37 and read that for us. And tell us why you think we went to Deuteronomy 137. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying, Thou also shall not go in thither. Um, So we're looking at Deuteronomy. So this is Moses. We're looking at the Lord was uh, angry at him for your sakes, assuming Israel, um, and that you also will not go thither, thither, uh, will not go forward. Wait, let me back up. Let me rephrase the question. Let me rephrase it. What is it, where in that scripture can you see the Lord operating like Nahor? Angry. Lord was angry. There you go. Mm -hmm. You can imagine his nostrils are flaring right about there, ain't he? Mm -hmm. And we're in the book of Deuteronomy. We're, uh, this ain't book of Joshua. We just left Joshua. So this is before Joshua's book. <laughs> so he's angry. I wonder why. Why is he angry? Because God is, uh, Moses is telling the people at this time, what to expect, what's coming up. But you know, a lot of people, you can tell them what's coming up, but they still won't listen. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he sent the spies out. And, and remember, the, uh, 10 of them came back. Uh, uh, I know they, they, they are giants, and we're like grasshoppers. That right there made God what angry. Mm -hmm. But two of them came back, which was uh, uh, Joshua, and the other one, they came back with a good report, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the nostrils, the flaring, we can see how God now puts himself into people. We can see God's character, DNA, into these people that's listed right here in the Bible. 
they get angry, you know, serving them other idols. I, uh, now you see why. Because God gets angry when he knows we're serving these idols. Mm. So sometimes when we act on the, the positive and the negative, we're just really acting out God. Because he does get angry. His nose flare. I'm sure. Uh, now, we're all mothers, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, know, I don't know about y'all, but my kids were no angels. And when my kids was act up, I, boy, oh boy, I may be little, but I can show some anger. My 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 eyes get big, my nose uh, start uh, puffing and puffing like, you know, because I'm what angry, angry. So, but then when things are settled, guess what? That anger dissipates because now they're doing what I told them to do. Are y'all seeing this? That's good. Any I thoughts to, on that? Sandy? I have to borrow you for you to tell my son what I want him to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Doesn't work. I tell you, you know, uh, uh, when my grandmother, I knew my grandmother got flared up. It wasn't her nostrils, it was the switch. The it switch was, was coming. <laughs> that was my mom, too. The belt was coming. Yeah. She was snorting with a switch and a belt. <laughs> Amen. 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 So like right now, if we were to look at today's what's going on, we could actually see God is snorting. He, yeah, his, yeah. his nostrils is flaring up right now. Just like in this text, how he gets angry then, he's angry now. Angry now. Mm -hmm. And a great way to indicate the anger of God, look at the weather pattern. Yeah, look what's coming. Look the weather. Uh, say what, Sandy? The, what, the Hurricane Laura is coming to devastate. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Yeah. And have you noticed that? Yeah. yeah, we get storms, we get hurricanes, yeah, we get weather, but this time they're more intensified. Mm -hmm. They're more stronger. We used to get one hurricane, but now you get two at once. We yeah. have heard of that, back to back like that. That's right. Angry, the waves is roaring. Mother Nature is upset. There's something not right. There are some idol worshipers going on today. Right, yeah. And those specific places. Louisiana, which is really known for all that stuff, and mm -hmm. yeah, 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 well, it's going to be bad. Yeah, so we can see now what uh, there is a legitimacy when there is anger. It, uh, sometimes anger is legitimized. Yes, because if you don't, sometimes that's the only way you can get to the enemy. You got to get angry. Yeah, because if you stay nice too long, they'll they walk all over you. Right, right. You and then what they did to Jehovah, to God in the wilderness, he was nice to them. But they kept on serving them idol gods. Right. And he kept on forgiving them. Right. So we're going to end right there. Tina, share with us, what did you learn on Nahor today? I learned basically that, that God has characteristics just like we do of uh, anger, of uh, uh, being, uh, you know, feeling, feeling, feeling discon discontent with people. And just like we feel discontent, God feels discontent. Um, how we express our discontent, he expresses his discontent. And, you know, thank you for the mercy and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, because without that, uh, we all would continue in our patterns because uh, I was an idol, idol worshiper before, you know, I love money, I love cars, I love security, you know, we all have certain things that we, that we are like a fallback, you know, just sort of like, you know, that's in your, your culture and your, in your, you know, your popular culture. So in order for you to kind of break out of that popular culture, you got to get a little disconcerted with your situation. You got to, you know, there's got to be something, a turning point. That, that God will generally give his people to get them out. Like he got Abraham out, you know, he spoke to him and said, get out of this popular culture. He spoke to Gina and he said, Gina, get out of this popular culture, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and he has a way to, you know, when you, there's got, basically there's got to be some flaring of nostrils in order you, for you to break, right. out, to break out of your popular culture or your, your, your status quo. And that's what I see from this. I see God's always, you know, he's always got his love and his grace and his mercy. But on the other side, if you don't see that anger side, if you don't see, you know, 
that that aspect just like we have the right to be angry he has the right to be angry and you know so we gotta we just gotta see a little bit of us and him i guess sometimes because sometimes mm -hmm. we forget <laughs> yeah exactly sometimes, sometimes we forget so that's that's pretty much what i see here and i just thank the lord that you know he calls us and that you know if we have the intelligence or the ability to hear his call that we can break out of our circumstances amen awesome thank you thank you so much for those great uh summation and comments on what you learned on this lesson today sister sandy what about yourself what did you get out of this lesson called nahor okay uh two things um the definition of nahor is the snorting so yes you do need the aggressiveness the snorting is it, it brings change it makes you move um it gets you out of your what you're doing that you're not supposed to be doing and it goes through all the different people which we're showing here how the genealogy of jesus it stays together with the people to move in the direction that god wants these people to move and in this case it was the birth of their son so you had to snort them along, push them along, get them to do stuff, marry the wrong people, do this, do that, and go through and so that Jesus could be born. And then it also states that um, God still gets angry. He still snorts at what's going on in this world. And it's going to happen until um, Jesus returns. And because he's going to, I don't know, we don't know how long, how many more years, minutes, sec or days, or whatever, but he's snorting along. He's fighting his adversary. He's fighting Satan, fire with fire, through any means possible to still try to wake up these people and move the people along to find his son. And it's, that's just it. That's, this is the residue of what we saw today. Um, keeping the genealogy going, keeping his key people going in today's world, moving them along, making them do what they need to do to get the word out there. And God still gets mad and does things through um, volcanoes, uh, weather patterns, whatever he needs to do. And, mm -hmm. and then who knows? You know, there's, it still may be Nahor's name today for this word snorting because it keeps the... Uh, kind of the ideology moving along because we know how we name each our children by our ancestry and this probably in the Jewish sector and different things they name their children based on the scriptures more than maybe Americanized does but I know that my own daughter named her children Ezekiel and Josiah so it, you know how you name right. people it, it carries forth Jesus genealogy even in her home amongst her children that is carrying forth Jesus, you know, right there. And uh, so it's really slick, the study this year, how we um, are seeing the names, how they mean certain things and how um, it keeps it going. It's like a slow ball just rolling along through the thousands of years of, of how this works, keeping the people connected through names and the names have meaning. And then the ultimate is that God represents some of these meanings and also Jesus. So it's really very interesting uh, study. All right, my goodness, I tell you, you ladies, uh, I feel like I wanna do this lesson all over again. Wow, look at what we were able to discover. Even with anger, there are some positivity that we can bring out of that. You know, just real quickly, let me just, it made me think about uh, the late uh, Congressman John Lewis, he made a very profound statement. He said when his mother, when he was a young boy growing up during the civil rights time, he said his mother told him, don't get in the way, stay out of the way, you know, don't get in trouble. But he said he had to find a way to get in trouble because that was the only way that good was going to come about. Mm -hmm. So he was like that snorting. He was snorting. He was flared up. He got beat up. I mean, uh, they beat him up, threw him in jail. You know, those people were snorting. The women with the right to vote, uh, the suffrage back in those days. Uh, we can go back all the way in history. There was a lot of flare up. There was a lot of people with their nostrils snorting. And we can see if they had not done what they did in history, if nobody came against Hitler, 
Germany and Hitler uh, regime would be in charge of the whole world today if there had not been those that had the snorting ability to stand up for justice. Hey, listen, with that being said, I'm glad I'm in Jesus' genealogy. I'm so glad to know that I'm related to Nahor. Mm -hmm. All right, then, God bless us all. Hey, listen, we started out in prayer, and we shall end in prayer. I think, uh, Miss Gina, you got to close us out? Cindy, did you open this up, or Gina? I did. Okay, I'll Gina, close, close us out. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you, Jesus, that, that he came to to deliver us out of the, the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We thank you for grafting your people into your family, Lord. And just like all family, we, 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 we've got growth. So Lord, just bless your, your church family. Bless your people, Lord. Help us to grow in the knowledge of you. Help us to, to, to just come into a better understanding of who we are and who you are. Release your identity over your people, Father God, that they know that they are sons and daughters. And I just thank you. I thank you for Jesus, for giving us the Holy Spirit, bringing us home, Lord. I thank you for everything and anything and, and for what you're doing, what you've done, and, and just to keep us moving in the right line, Father God, because you are an amazing, wonderful Father. And it, whether you're angry or whether you're happy, Lord, we know you got the, you know, you got our back. So we just thank you. We praise you. We ask you to just watch over us. And I thank you for this ministry, um, for your teaching, for your word to help and guide us. We love you. And we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Wow. All right, then, ladies, thank you so much for joining Black Who once again on the Zoom. And we do look forward to another great Zoom class this time next week. All right, then. God bless you all. And all right. Keep, keep Bye, y'all. Okay. Keep the recording. Bye. Keep the recording. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop the recording. I'll stop the recording. Yeah.